heard from you first. Perhaps you want to lead us off with a few of your key takeaways from today. Well, sure. I, and, and, and maybe I'll continue the theme of, of starting high level, and then, then we'll let uh, the other panelists provide maybe richer thoughts. Um, look, from a fraud perspective, I think everybody needs to leave with an understanding of, of exactly how fast the identity fraud landscape evolves and the various ways it attacks your organization. Right? And if you understand how fast the target moves and how it impacts you then, you, then you quickly understand the role machine learning needs to play in an efficient defense. Right? We, we went through some of the best practices there, uh, and I think we've had a lot of really good commentary on the potential both to uh, build models internally and work with third-party providers. Uh, and, and hopefully we've, we've put out some pretty good stakes in the ground for the kind of services that uh, uh, Innova and IDA can bring to the table in terms of prioritizing model governance, always being really forward thinking on machine learning that you should hold any provider to when you when you go external. Then heard from Clyde. Clyde, do you want to give us a few of your key takeaways from today's presentation? Yes, and I injected some of them at the last of mine. So what I would say is uh, the faster payments model that's, uh, that spans across the U.S. and international I would make a strong argument that it requires um, everyone looking towards uh, ML solutions. Um, you've got to be able to evolve at the speed of financial crime, and that's becoming harder and harder. And all these solutions that we all want to offer, and, and I say solutions, the products and the uh, capabilities that we want to offer, really require that front-end real-time decision and evolving that decision. And that's really what I'm ML model uh, offers. And I kind of gave some of the different options of how you can approach it based on the size and uh, talent pool that you have. Um, but there's lots of in-betweens and in all of that where uh, the ML solutions can really benefit you and the whole financial industry. And turn things to Wayne. Wayne, some key takeaways from yourself. Yeah, uh, so uh, the source of um, of the model, whether it comes from a vendor or, or if it's, it's developed by the user, um, <clears throat> the nature of the model framework, depending, uh, irrespective of the technology, whether it's traditional statistical or, or, or late um, development uh, uh, machine learning methods or the, the type of the data that are used or the model used, irrespective of all of those dimensions of model development, model accountability and model risk management from a user's perspective um, at a financial institution remains the same. We heard from Joe. Joe, do you want to close us out with a few of your key points as well? Yeah, sure. I mean, it sort of sort of builds off, um, you know, what, what the others have said, but I think the main thing is that uh, fraud moves fast and it's, it's getting faster. <laughs> Um, how fraudsters operate and are able to turn small frauds into big frauds very quickly. And so uh, you need to invest in not only um, better models, and in our case, that is uh, generally machine learning models that are able to capture those, those changes more quickly and turn them back into production for, uh, for your decisioning, but also invest in an infrastructure that allows you to leverage internal and external data, and then automate those decisions and processes as much as possible. So you can quickly identify the goods and the bads and the ones that need, that are in the middle that need uh, remediation. 